Yeah, a very good afternoon, all of you here. Hi, can you hear me well? Yeah, once again, a very good afternoon for all of you in Indonesia and Goeiemorgen allemaal in the Netherlands. Welcome to the second day of the week of Indonesian Netherlands Education and Research winner with the overarching theme, Innovation for the SDGs, Education and Research Collaboration Towards the Future. I am Indira, Startup Acceleration at Altira, Alternative Investments Advisory Group and Services, and also a proud Holland alumni. Today is an honor for me to moderate a panel discussion for our main session of the second edition winner 2021 with the theme Connecting Digital Startup Ecosystem between Indonesia and the Netherlands towards the sustainable goals. This event has been made possible by Netherlands Alumni Network Indonesia in collaboration with Halo ID and Rotasi Institute. So with today's theme of discussion, this discussion has the goal to identify key issues, opportunities and approaches for addressing activities, particularly in achieving relations to SDGs. Explore the main opportunities and challenges to provide an Indonesia Netherlands startup ecosystem. Moreover, this session is intended to discuss where opportunities for digital startup collaboration converge, what can the two countries learn from each other in the area of digital startup ecosystem improvement. In today's panelists, we have our speaker from the Netherlands that can help us to give overview of the Dutch digital ecosystem and also four speakers from the Indonesian side, my fellow Holland alumna, that will share their experiences and knowledge by actively engaged in the startups ecosystem in the, in the ecosystem. Without further ado, I'm very excited to introduce our today's panelists. So I would like to say hi first to Pim from the Netherlands. Hi, Pim. Thank you, Indira. Hi, how you more? How it's 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 okay. It's okay. It's okay. So it's okay. I hope it's it's a nice weather there in the Netherlands. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's just a bit yeah. cold now. Oh, it's already it's cold. cold. So yeah. yeah. So Pim the Box is the chairman of Dutch Incubation Association. Could you tell us a bit about yourself, Pim? Yeah, my, myself, I'm a, a serial entrepreneur. I've, I've set up uh, nine companies. Yeah. And uh, one of those companies is uh, the in, it, an incub well, we developed business incubators in the Netherlands, uh, six, six, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And I sold that company uh, a few years ago. So that's, I'm, I'm, let's say, a veteran in the incubation industry. I started that in 1999. Okay. So, uh, I'm, I'm an old man in this uh, in this sector, <laughs> but, but with uh, great you know, experience, uh, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> have to be an entrepreneur myself, and at a certain moment decided that I wanted to uh, inspire others to become entrepreneur and help them on their way. That's that's where it came from, mm -hmm. and um, I think that. It's uh, yeah. It's it's a great way to to first of all share share your ex 
experience and 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 secondly to it's still nice to work with startups i still work with startups but now more as a coach and an informal investor yeah and um, but uh, because you know there is so much enthusiasm to take on the challenges we have in the world mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we need all this enthusiasm and ambition uh, to, to, to support that so they can do their job for the for the society yes, and the, planet, eh? the people yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay we're <laughs> we're going to discuss more on the discussions sure, later on that. so I would like to also to introduce to our next speaker we also have with us Palmira Bahtiar, or we can call as Mbak Mia. She is the senior researcher at Smeru Institute. Hi Mbak, welcome. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Indira and Pak Kim. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's getting rain here. Yeah, oh, it's quite hi. dark here, but I hope it doesn't lift up our, uh, it doesn't turn down our spirit to join this yeah. event. Yeah. <laughs> so Mbak Palmir, Mbak Mia, can you tell us a bit more about yourself? What's your yeah. activities in Sumeru and what's your uh, research interests? Yeah, uh, actually uh, I am a researcher in Sumeru. I rather not tell myself senior. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry for that. I will, no, I will no, no. <laughs> just say the researcher then. <laughs> yeah, uh, but um, Smeru itself is a, a think tank, uh, and we actually started in 2001, uh, uh, two years before, starting from 1997-1998, if you still remember, we had uh, economic crisis, uh, in which... Yeah, I, was, uh, the, I was still in the elementary school on that time, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky. <laughs> It was very tough time, and at that time, the World Bank has a unit of a smer, so called Smeru, and Smeru was carrying out a, a monitoring um, survey uh, for the poor, how they respond to a crisis. And two of, two years after that, we, we, we became independent and we start a, a foundation. Um, and uh, only in the last two years, we start a new. Uh, topic like uh, digital economy and startup and these are two uh, research interests that um, I'm going to also uh, uh, bring refer to when we start the discussion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you also a whole an album like may I know where yeah. you graduated from? Yeah. It was during <laughs> economic crisis in okay. 97. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was uh, uh, alumni uh, in uh, ISS. Okay. Yeah, ISS in Den Haag. The Hague, yeah, the Hague. Time. yeah, the Hague. Uh, and then I also, uh, when I accompany my husband, I also took a uh, um, research master in uh, Groningen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was in 2000. For 2007. Okay, it was so such an experience, yeah, but when we were in the Netherlands, yes, I believe it was a wonderful one and challenging, of course. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mamia. We will also invite our third speakers. Uh, we are pleased to have Faris Isnaini, Mas Faris. He is the CEO at ioblajar.com and also PhD researcher at Freie University. Welcome, Mas Faris. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah. So, Mas Faris, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your experience in the Netherlands? Yeah, I may say I'm a junior serial founder. So, I've built like <laughs> uh, three startups now. Uh, this is the latest one. Uh, I, I'm taking my PhD at the moment uh, at Freie University in Amsterdam, focusing mostly on the uh, alliance and the impact of uh, in, uh, in the impact of the uh, alliance into the innovation performance of uh, developing country firms. Currently, I'm building an tech companies uh, focusing mostly on K-12 sectors. Basically, the idea is to open the access to all Indonesian students to, to be able to get the proper uh, education, like good quality education across Indonesia. Uh, it's been two years now, 
we are growing, but uh, at the very beginning, we thought that this is a blessing in disguise, the pandemic, because <laughs> everyone started to shift from offline to online. But then competition is raising up significantly. So mm -hmm. yeah, still surviving, trying to, to, to make impact as many as possible. Yeah, 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 sure. Because oh, like, <laughs> we are sure learning a lot through this uh, pandemic era because yeah, everything is going online. Even today we are meeting online. And yeah, I I think like Hopkins is like one of a great breakthrough in like, having us to experience this like so-called this seminar of offline online so yeah it's really good to meet all of you here and what about uh how's your experience mas faris in when so no uh, are you in the netherlands or are you in indonesia no i moved back to indonesia back in 2019 mid of 2019 okay. I continued my phd from indonesia okay uh, my, my background mostly in strategy, so I used to work for Procter & Gamble uh, for a few years, uh, mm -hmm. Guangzhou and also Singapore, and then uh, continue my study uh, to the UK, to Leeds, taking international business, and then moved to the Netherlands, fell in love with startups, and then building the first one, focusing on tourism sectors, and then moved to health activity sectors, now in uh, ad tech sectors. Wow, quite very <laughs> so much. It's really yeah, great I, to hear. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool for now, but yeah. That's okay. Yeah, good, good to hear. And yeah, we will have a further conversation during the discussion. And I would like to also invite, last but not least, our speaker, Adrian Gunadi, Mas Adrian, the co founder and CEO of Investry. Good afternoon, Mas Adrian. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Indira. Uh, thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here as a panelist and meeting uh, the other wonderful and distinguished speakers also in this panel session. Yeah, great, great. So can you tell us about, yeah, we all know in Fast Free, but can you tell us a bit more <laughs> on how, how you came up with the in Fast Free idea and then how you can like, achieve the journey because I know up until now Investor is already in their Series C fund, right? If I'm not correct. If we're I'm actually correct. uh we're we're actually working on a D fund right now on our series. Oh D fund. fund. Okay. <laughs> okay, good, good. So, okay. No, I think sure? I think I think um you know um number one uh investor started because of my background as a banker. So actually I was a professional for almost 20 years. Um I I, I did not want to become a dinosaur perhaps <laughs> And, and saw that how digital is changing the way we live, the way we uh, watch movies, the way we uh, order our food. Um, so evidently, you know, um, digital will change financial services. So I left banking back in 2015 uh, to start Investry. So we are on our sixth year um, as the leading SME marketplace lending platform in Indonesia. Uh, but also we are now present in two other countries. Uh, we have a full license in the Philippines as well as in Thailand. So we're running three countries um, supporting SMEs um, through digital. I think that has a lot to do with my background as a banker. I uh, saw firsthand how access to um, working capital for SMEs was not there. Um, and, and the fact that technology needs to be accessible uh, mm -hmm. so that SMEs can further grow. So that is actually the story behind Investry, creating a solution for SMEs, um, and also at the same time, creating a platform for lenders who are looking for alternative yields, but also at the same time, helping out the SMEs. Mm -hmm. um, so we, um, um, yeah, so that's the background of Investry. And uh, as Mas uh, Faris has also mentioned, you know, it's a, it's a different life, right? Being a startup. <laughs> uh but i think we see a lot of potential collaboration i think that's what we like about the startup industry is that you build collaboration uh you build digital ecosystems i think that is where uh indonesia is in the exciting forefront of building this digital ecosystem and and everyone's talking digital i think what happened in the pandemic only accelerated that um so that's a bit of a background uh myself i'm actually the co-founder and ceo of investry 
uh, but I'm also the chairman of the Indonesian FinTech Lending Association. So um, uh, I, I support also and work together with regulators to ensure that there is a level playing field, clear governance in terms of the uh, FinTech lending industry. Um, I was in Netherlands actually back in 20, uh, 2002. I did yeah. my uh, master's MBA at Rotterdam School of Management. Um, so um, that's actually where my connection with the Netherlands happens. Uh, obviously, great network. Uh, and obviously, I, I love the football. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> We're also no, in the same uh, Rotterdamers. Rotterdamers. Yeah, Rotterdamers. <laughs> Rotterdamers. <laughs> Okay, it was great to hear from us, Adrian. So I'm sorry for saying like Mas Adrian is our last speaker. I miscalculate all of us here. I already counted we are five, but actually there are six of us that should be in the panelists. So I would like to invite Dr. Nico Azari Hidayat. He is the lecturer at Faculty of Advanced Technology and Multidiscipline University of Arlanga. And he is also the CEO at medicaltourism.id. So I would like to hear from Mas Nico here. How could you like split your time dealing in the health sector and also building your startup? Please, Mas Nico. Yes. Uh, hello, uh, Mr. Pim the Box, uh, Bupalmira, Paris, uh, Adrian. Nice to see you. Nice to know you, also Indira. I'm the latest last because uh, Indira have mentioned <laughs> Pak Adrian adalah uh, the, uh, last but not least, gitu. Uh, but uh, finally, I'm here. I'm also actually a cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon. I learned in UMC Utrecht as a fat chirurg, a vascular surgeon. But I, I'm really enthusiastic when I was uh, in fellowship in uh, 2014. Uh, I'm back from uh, in, uh, to Indonesia bring a, 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 a big package of of technology digital thing that i learned also, also in utrecht the netherlands that's why i built uh, farises uh, vascular indonesia.com it started to to uh, to express for the people in indonesia about ict information communication and technology now uh, becoming 14 brands because vascular itself there is a vein Fain's health, and also mm -hmm. arterial health, and also aortic health. Big, big, large uh, vessel here uh, just came out from the uh, heart. I build it also for for the people to get awareness of aortic disease. So still, I work in the aspect of health, but mm -hmm. uh, I also try to manage uh, the technology side. That's why digital yeah. health is one of of my patients. Now I'm here. Okay, thank you, Indra. <laughs> yeah, just one, just one curious out of my curiosity, Mas yeah. Nico. Yeah. Faculty of Advanced Technology and multi yes. uh, multidiscipline is under the health faculty, or it's a separate faculty? Yeah, no, it, it's it's separated. It's separated okay. now. I mean, I mean, it's new faculty that built now. Now, uh, a surgeon like me is not only in the medical faculty. Now, uh -huh. in the Institute of Technology, like. Fakultas Teknologi and Advance uh, uh, Multidisciplinary in Erlangga, yes. Okay, it's interesting to know that faculty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah. now we are here with all our yes. five panelists. Uh, we are about to start our discussion. But before that, while we are having our discussion, I would like to invite all of the audience here. Uh, the, I have the information for the organi organizer that we have 250 audience participating mm -hmm. in this session. So yeah, it's right. such a huge number. Yeah. Thank you for all your enthusiasm. We are about to start the discussion. And I would like to invite all of the audience here to type your questions in the chat box, and then we will cover them afterwards. So we will start with the discussion first with our panelists, and then we will answer your questions afterwards. Please be, be active and get excited because it's really the moment for us to learn and speed growth. So as I mentioned before, our topics today is related with digital startup ecosystem and also SDGs. Our speakers here already mentioned all the key points, like the key points that we are going to cover in the discussion. Mm -hmm. SDGs are designed as a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. 
and they were set up in 2015 in order to be reached by 2030. So now we are almost in the end of 2021. We have eight years to go to achieve these goals. They address three central aspects of sustainability, economic prosperity, social equity, and environmental protection. In line with this, the UN General Assembly has identified that entrepreneurship together with innovation as a key element for addressing sustainable development challenges. So from our speakers here, I believe we have we cover the good health and well-being goals, also the quality of education, design work and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, reducing inequality and also partnership for the goals. So my first question to all of my friends here, to all the panelists uh, this afternoon and morning in the Netherlands, how would your entrepreneurial activities influence sustainable development? And under what sustainable goals do you support through your startups activities? I'll give the floor first to Mas Nico. We know that recently you have just launched your startup, Mas, the Medical Tourism Indonesia. Yeah. <laughs> How do you see medical tourism in Indonesia in supporting the SDGs achievement? And what goals do you think that are supported by your startups? Yes, thank you very much for the chance. Yes, uh, yeah. uh, I see the digital uh, startup ecosystem as my passion in digital health. Mm -hmm. I try to, to build up uh, and optimize the healthcare uh, travel uh, uh, and also tourism because because that is one of the lack experience of Indonesia 100 100 billion rupiah flow, flown to other country every year yeah. because many patient of uh, Indonesian people uh, try to seek a treatment in other countries right yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why yeah, I try to manage, yeah. right, that's why I try to manage how can Indonesian doctors can be appreciated more and also uh, the perception of the people in Indonesia try to uh, um, get more, I mean, believe that Indonesian doctor is good enough and that the technology is fine. So that's why I built medicaltourism.id and mm -hmm. that is already now in Android and that actually, uh, at least in SDGs, is uh, number three good health and well-being yeah. also because i'm the basic of uh, education of, of academic and versus i i try to build build in curriculum that's why for quality education number four sdgs number four and 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 also the other thing it's it's it's, it's a matter of fact of in industry right so it's number number nine industry innovation and in, in infrastructure because kemen parekrof the ministry of tourism and 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 creative economy also uh, supporting us to 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 gain this project nationally and mm -hmm. the last but not least the number 17 partnership for the goals at least yeah. for sdgs we gain for the medical tourism uh, indonesia yeah thank you indira yeah thank you mas nico so um it's now starting in surabaya right Yes, I'm piloting project in Surabaya because mm -hmm. uh, doing it with a startup and also Pentahelix uh, method. Pentahelix means involving government, academician, businessmen, uh, community, and also media. I try yeah. to as focus as I can, and then it, it can build a best practice for other other cities to to get uh, uh, attached later on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, do you already have in mind uh, like? where to scale up after this after Surabaya the pilot project you already have in mind yes well uh some of cities actually had approached right now mm -hmm. and uh, like uh, Jakarta Tangerang and then and Bali as well is also trying to contact us to uh, involve in in our platform but I still ho in hope because I try to manage the pilot project to be successful first yes okay thank you Mas Nico yeah. So from health tech sector, I would like to move to the education sector. We have Mas Faris here. So Mas Faris, can you share us a bit uh, to tell us your perspective or thoughts on how your startup or your business are dealing with the SDGs improvement? Of course, uh, we are trying to contribute something for the education sector. That's for sure. But 
But the, the, the problem that when you decide uh, why it should be an attack, uh, we don't fall from the background. So I come from a farmer family. So my grandparents, they are actual farmers in the city, uh, digging, uh, really digging, not owning the land. And then my mom is the only one who got the chance to go to the university. And we see that education is something really uh, like a good investment for us to change our future. But unfortunately, in Indonesia, uh, we are the fourth largest country in the world in terms of population. But we are in the bottom 10% globally uh, for, the, for the global education benchmark. Test. So, a lot of, a lot of uh, homework that we need to do uh, on the uh, Sorry, Mas Faris. Sorry. But yeah. Can you? Uh, talk a bit closer to the mic because your sound is okay. a bit far from us. Yeah. Yeah. Is it clear now? Now it's very clear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry okay. about that. So yeah. Uh, so uh, we see that there is a lot of rooms for improvement in Indonesia in terms of our education uh, yeah. sector. Uh, we are we are now globally uh, the fourth largest country. We have around 55 million students every year, mm -hmm. but we are still the bottom 10 percent globally. Uh, in terms of our education benchmark test. And uh, during these pandemic times as well, we are losing additional 20 years of uh, potential growth in terms of education. So we see a lot of, lot of uh, rooms for improvement. This is not a game of one or two big players uh, at tech companies. It's a, a game for a lot of stakeholders. So that's why we think that this, uh, uh, we need to, to open the access to all students across Indonesia. Uh, a number of uh, issues. One is price is expensive. Uh, even if you see like some pre pre uh, preliminary preliminary schools, they are charged uh, more than the the fee of going to university. So yeah. good good education is really really expensive now, and it's mm -hmm. it can only be uh, it can only be felt or used by people in big cities. And yeah. we see this. So I quit my previous company at the moment. Uh, pandemic happening, so because we thought this is this is the moment to the momentum, really, yeah, mas, yeah. yeah, the momentum to encourage all stakeholders, uh, the governments especially, uh, because now they are allocating bigger budgets, but but a lot of players now coming up uh, and they are focusing on profit, uh, not only to support <laughs> students. So uh, now basically what we do, we build our content internally, following the national curriculum. On top of that, we are also building extracurricular subjects. Uh, the idea is basically to minimize the impact of COVID-19 uh, at the very beginning. So we are focusing on live class format because mm -hmm. Indonesian students, we think they are not uh, they are not in a stage yet like Indian or Chinese, where they can learn independently. Uh, yeah. So we think video on demand kind of format seems a bit still more difficult for them. So live classes, that's the thing we are trying to push more. We are doing a lot of collaboration with governments, with uh, stakeholders, doing CSR activities, any kind of things, because we believe there is no business is an island. Mm -hmm. So uh, considering our size is small, our funding capacity is also not that big. Uh, we are still in a pre-series A round now. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's how we are planning to do it, basically. But not, is, uh, yeah, so is your main users now is uh, mainly located in Java Island or you already reach outside the Java Island? For B2B, for B2B like uh, having contracts with schools, we are focusing on Sumatra and Java uh, okay. mostly. So next year, uh, we'll start to enter uh, another islands. But for uh, B2C, like in general, because we are in collaboration with Cominfo as well, we are uh -huh. helping them to provide uh, English training for tour guides across Indonesia. So we are already surfing literally from Aceh to Papua to Sorong. Oh. So we are we are, across, we are across the nation already. Nice, nice. Good to know. So yeah, we're moving to Mas Adrian. Like we would like to hear his perspective from the investory perspective in dealing with SDGs. And afterwards, we will also invite Mbak Mia from the research perspective. Please, Mas yes. uh, thank you, Indira. I think I think when when we first started, and I think in general, what I'm hearing in terms of the perspective or the startups, right, um, is always trying to solve a problem. Um, I think most of the startups are here because of there is a, a gap, yeah. um, there is a problem, 
and how we can use uh, a new business model, uh, how we can use technology, how we can use data uh, to address this problem. Um, I think the background, as I mentioned, of investry was we identified there is a gap of uh, access to finance um, for small, medium businesses, um, which is not being served by the banks. And so uh, the small, medium businesses are considered what we call the missing middle um, or remains underserved by the banks. So this is where um, number one obviously relates to inclusion how yeah. industry as a startup is driving inclusion, uh, which will then lead to the empowerment of small, medium businesses. Now, within our business, um, of which we are providing working capital solutions for small businesses, mm -hmm. there is also unique sub-verticals that we have. Number one is women empowerment. So we have one vertical which focuses on women entrepreneurship um we have supported around i believe around six thousand uh small women entrepreneurs in rural areas in indonesia of uh, we are also digitizing their process so everything is done through digital um you have, you have the information you're able to provide access to finance to these women rural entrepreneurs who are then using these funds for productive purposes. They are selling, they're making food for uh, restaurants, right? That's number one. Number two, we recently also um, started our uh, green vertical, we call it. So we're also now providing access to working capital for green financing purposes. We just did a transaction uh, of which we are providing um, uh, access to finance for uh, electric motorcycles uh, and the distributor. So this becomes part of uh, the green financing, which relates to the overall uh, SDG uh, target. Now, why we are doing a lot of these sub verticals within our business is because access um, to funding from the impact funds have increased mm -hmm. over the past several years. Um, obviously, there are major players I I globally, uh, so we are working with some of the major players, uh, like in the Netherlands, one of the most prominent one is FMO, uh, that's yeah. a prominent impact fund as well. Uh, so, um, you know, these are some of the names that we're working with. So we need to identify impact opportunities within our business. And I think that is where we provide a unique angle uh, mm -hmm. as a startup on how we can also, number one, create a better impact uh, in line with what we are developing. So I think this is where uh, I see the, the other startups here also are creating impact, I believe. And yeah. uh, I think we should amplify this more, um, not only in Indonesia, but globally, uh, mm -hmm. because obviously these are uh, showcases that we can uh, uh, create together. Yeah. Thanks, Ms. Adrian. So, uh, yeah, there's an interesting point here because, like, startup is always try to solve the problem with like a disruptive innovation. So they always like to challenge the existing market with their own way. Thank you, Ms. Adrian. And now to Mbak Mia. Uh, thank yeah, you. Can you share your, uh, bit, yeah, can you share a bit your perspective on this first point, Mbak? Yeah, uh, first of all, we share the same, uh, our vision is uh, also is the same with the uh, SDGs uh, goal one, which is uh, uh, no poverty. Our vision is actually a creation of Indonesian society free of absolute uh, poverty and high inequality. So we do research to achieve this um, vision. And we also uh, improve uh, policy making uh, um, of the government. Um, previously, the, uh, the policy should not be uh, based on common sense, but it should uh, come from the research. Mm -hmm. um, the data, I am. Yeah, so it's, it, it, it should not be because of the feeling of the policy maker, but really it comes from evidence. Yeah. Uh, uh, and our research uh, covers several part of the um, SDGs, for example, uh, the first one is no poverty and also uh, hunger, zero hungers. We have 
uh, research on health and well-being and education. We have a big project, uh, RISE, so-called RISE, uh, and on, that is on quality education. Gender equality is also a main part of our research. Um, clean water sanitation also. Recently, we added uh, uh, energy and also um, uh, climate action, yeah. Uh, but um, topics like, for example, uh, manpower and uh, employment is also our um, mainstream issues, industry and, uh, of course, um, uh, partnership, yeah. Okay, thank you, Mamia. And also, I would like to hear from Pim, because like Indonesia and the Netherlands is quite different. We are still like trying to solve many problems here. I would like to hear how's the condition there from the Netherlands? How's the entrepreneurial activities like supporting SDGs? And how do you see the difference between developed countries and developing countries in achieving or collaborating for the SD achievement SDGs? Thank you, uh, Indira. Let me assure you that we are also dealing with many problems we want to fix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, first, so I'm also a trainer on, on understanding uh, the, the importance of SDGs and, uh, and how to implement that and use that in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. It's uh, so all incubators and accelerators also in the Netherlands have, have made that, that are, are, are making that move towards in, uh, integrating that perspective into business planning, business modeling. Uh, for investors, it's, it's now called the ESGs are used, but uh, let's say that's a different set of, it's similar set of criteria, but especially made for funding. So we also, also integrate that in programs. Yeah. But really, the SDGs are like a sort of umbrella thing, a sort of a holistic view on the yeah. future of the world. Mm -hmm. So it's, at the one hand, you have to understand that everything is tied together. That there is a relationship between all of these. And uh, yes, uh, Palmyra, you said you have to uh, um, be able to measure that and have the data. But of course, in, in our daily practice, it's a combination of emotion or intuition even, and making it more concrete in in. That's why we also have in the SDG system, the indicators that underpin at least part of, of the mission that you have yeah. to have an impact on one, two, three, four SDGs. And we teach in, in our, let's say, training, we teach to focus on at least one as your main focus, mm -hmm. but also explain that there is a network effect on the other elements and in specifically in our trainer this is not for all incubators and accelerators but this is specific specific for impact leaders is that we always ask them also the, the to look at the contribution to a peaceful development because we think that is a sort of where you can see how the balance between nature and people although it's uh, we are a part of nature in a holistic view of course but how, how that is improving because there's a i think a, a, you understand you must agree with me that there is a big imbalance uh, uh, that we are more and more suffering from yeah so just to bring that together in in this discussion is is what is the relationship between incubators accelerator or the startup ecosystem and the sdgs and, and and digital technologies in, in that sense. So we must be honest that uh, having this this conf conference uh, online it, it also costs energy and technology, and it's it not necessarily uh, great uh, for the for our our, our uh, uh, CO two footprint, for instance. Mm -hmm. But Maybe it's better than me traveling to Indonesia to share uh, my experience there. So maybe it's a good, better solution. Yeah. So 
it is the in, that we have to, to be, be aware and see how our behavior can adapt in a way that our life on this planet, with this planet, becomes uh, more sustainable. That's, that's the overall objective, uh, really, of the SDGs. Okay. And if we want to achieve that, then everybody has to understand that. And the purpose of this, this framework is that we start understanding it and implementing it so we get alignment all over the world to realize these uh, goals in the coming, well, mm -hmm. eight years. <laughs> yeah, in the coming eight years, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Pim. Maybe, uh, maybe for... if I may, one, one or two minutes, I have a, also an example. So partnership, yeah, so we're also talking about cooperation between ecosystems in the Netherlands uh -huh. and, and Indonesia. So partnerships, uh, 17 is there, uh, of course, the, 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 the SDG for that. Yeah, and, and, uh, for instance, uh, from our Dutch Incubation Association, we, we've matched a uh, world startup in The Hague with uh, founders talent in, in Bandung mm -hmm. to accomplish that, that they can develop, uh, 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 let's say, an impact uh, program uh, for, let's say, Java. And what you see is that, that by exchanging that experience and using existing programs uh, that world startup already uh, has uh, in other parts of the world and adapting that to the local situation really accelerates the process of setting up uh, this program and the relevance of that is also that because they work together their startups and grown-ups and scale-ups can profit from that because that's why incubators and accelerators collaborate in the world is, of course, to offer this roots, uh, 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 lanes across the diverse uh, ecosystems in the world to give them access to other markets and access to other strategic partners in the world. So their mm -hmm. impact grows and multiplies. OK. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Vim. So yeah, my next question may be a little uh, a bit related to your uh, last answer so i would like again to ah, direct the question like. <laughs> yeah i would like to direct the question to you and mas adrian so by reflecting the startup ecosystem now in indonesia and the netherlands with all the players like the governments um the founders themselves and then also the incubators the accelerators the the policy makers uh, Indonesia is still in a stage of developing, while the Netherlands is somewhat is somewhat more advanced than us here in Indonesia. So, what, uh, according to you, Pim and Mas Adrian, what are the main opportunities and challenges of the digital startup ecosystem in each countries in Indonesia and the Netherlands? Who wants to go first, Mas Adrian? Maybe Mas Adrian first. Yeah, exactly. Well, I just <laughs> no, let, yeah, <laughs> let me try to take a first stab at it, right? Um, um, I, I think um, what we see, I mean, this is also based on our experience because we run three countries as well, um, Philippines as well as Thailand. Uh, there is no one unique uh, ecosystem for each country. I think each country has its own specific dynamics, um, which is obviously evident um, in Indonesia. You have to deal also with the regulation. Uh, you have to deal with educating uh, because this is something new. Uh, this is a new technology. So how do you build literacy is also important. Um, I think the stage, every country has a different stage of digital adoption. Every country has a different stage of digital literacy. So uh, that would determine how the ecosystem develops, right? Um, I think um, what we are seeing in Indonesia is uh, the beginning of these different ecosystems or different uh, digital space. Um, I think the government is trying to identify um, and also try to create a more uh, comprehensive framework on how that should be developed, right? Because I believe every 
digital startup is different um, and it cannot be standardized right but what i think can be done is creating a a, a general framework or an umbrella um, to help nurture and foster innovation right whether it's related to let's say incentives for new technologies um incentive for new developments um i think that can become an important step uh because i think at the end all um startups or new innovations wants to uh create a, a better empowerment right so perhaps this is the stage where indonesia is moving from a traditionally maybe resource-based economy into a more innovation-based economy Right. So I think this is a development and, and I think having these discussions with mature markets such as the Netherlands um, or other mature markets where they already have a more mature framework on uh, digital startups, on, on ecosystems, on data governance, that would really help right? Uh, to create this umbrella. So I believe in the end, this is a very exciting time, as I said. Uh, there's a, a lot of opportunity and I believe there are common learnings that we can share uh, together. I think that's some of the points that I wanted to highlight. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mas Adrian. Maybe Pim would like to add to what Yeah, yeah there are dif different uh, 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 things I'm thinking of. It's, so, at the one hand, I think, of course, if you look at, at governments, uh, they have a role to play in, in strengthening infrastructure uh, education to have uh, better literacy um, because without the infrastructure you cannot have this digital communication and services and so on so uh, that's clear in terms of uh, supporting uh, uh, startups always look first at what what barriers there are for the startups uh, before you think what you can do just maybe undo something that might be more helpful. Uh, and it also goes for, let's say, uh, how, how our startups can be, ed or let's say people educated to understand that being an entrepreneur or setting up a company represents uh, a great perspective for your future. So it's also a sort of, yeah, that I don't know much about education in, in Indonesia, but let's say 20 years back uh, the, in the Netherlands, this was not uh, part of the curriculum. It's, it's yeah. only since, uh, let's, yes, some universities were a bit faster, but let's say since 2006, seven, that, that uh, the, the, the law on higher education was changed. We helped to change that, by the way, as Dia. And uh, nowadays, it's it's part of their let's say their main purpose is to play also the to, to also educate on the on the competences on entrepreneurship and and offer uh, in, sort of incubation programs and stuff like that. So that's all governments can do. But what we can do is uh, listen to. The, the brave people in our society, that the pioneers yeah. that uh, that are faced with hurdles and and, and uh, don't have access to opportunities, and see what we we as a let's say we representing the startup ecosystem, uh, what we can do for that. And uh, Adrian is is doing great work on that. Uh, Faris is 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 is, is basically uh, in two areas eh? so at the one hand you're the entrepreneur that's facing all these uh, challenges the other hand you're also offering a solution as part of that because uh, e-tech or uh, uh, online education is really one of the solutions also uh, because you can tweak that into uh, something different than uh, let's say the traditional educational system so also people that don't have access or uh, that don't have the attitude to, to, to let's say, uh, profit enough from the current education system, you can 
uh, service with your solution. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. yeah. We have to move to the Q and A questions now because we already have four questions from the audience for our audience here. So uh, the first questions. Yeah, it's from. How can we find pain points? Yeah, how can we find pain points in an area easily where it is usually the material to form an industrial startup? So I guess uh, what he mentioned here, oh, it's from Abdullah Muhammad Ali. Thank you, Abdullah Muhammad Ali, for your questions. So how do a startups come out with a problem to solve? Maybe uh, we can have Mas Faris and Mas Nico to answer this question. Should I go first? Yes, please, Mas. Yeah, well, uh, there are a number of ways to, to find pain points uh, at the very beginning. We, we normally, when we build a startup, we try to see the problems. What are the problems that we are trying to solve? From that point, uh, it's a continuous process. Uh, normally, people can do surveys. They talk to as many people as possible uh, involving in that kind of business. For example, uh, in ad tech sectors, uh, we need to talk to parents, to students, to schools, to governments, to, to uh, other stakeholders as well, trying to see whatever issues that we find, is that the real issue from the customer point of view? Uh, are we really trying to solve the issue or we are just trying to socialize whatever uh, solution that we are offering? Sometimes we, we see that it's too comfortable for us uh, having this kind of business model and uh, try to, to close uh, our ears and say that this is the best solution for everything. But in fact, it is actually not uh, solving any issue. So what, 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 what they can do, first, of course, uh, doing surveys qualitatively, uh, also quantitatively, do, doing FGD, or even ask the sales team to talk to uh, as many uh, potential customers as possible take a look at the online reviews as well. Even sometimes you also try to see your competitors' outlook. Uh, what are they doing? Is it really improving their performance? Uh, do we have another space to, to reapplicate or do we need to improve whatever kind of uh, solutions they are providing? From that process, at the end of the day, it's a continuous process. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you read Lean Startup, uh, it's a build, measure, learn. So there is no specific uh, uh, ways uh, to, to really, uh, this is the step for you to find the, the main pain points. It's a continuous learning process. Uh, yeah. At the end of the day, once you, you, you can see the growth and also you can see revenue coming in, uh, good cohort analysis, retention rate is good, then uh, you may find the, the, the perfect market fit. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, you can see the pain points you are, you are trying to, to also solve. Maybe yeah, that's, but that's I, yeah. Yeah, I guess Mas Arif mentioned quite a good point here, like start from your customers first, from your targeted customers, because they are the one who are facing the problem. And we should know that if that problem is really a pain problem from them, like try by digging the information through research, uh, either quantitative or qualitative research, try to understand your market and then try to see what are the excess in the market and try to come up with something new. Mas Nico, do you have something to add? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. So, um, dealing with the health aspect on the health startup, yeah, I think the best way to find pain points is by having the pains itself. So you you must you must feeling the pains, pain be pains becoming passions. So for every young startup or maybe candidate for startup, you have to know the the dasel then dasein and dasolain. So that's you can uh, identify the problems, and then becoming your 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 pains. And mm -hmm. pains is actually challenges. The more uh, the more we facing the challenges, the more we mature. Yeah. So yeah, one, once again, the best way to 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 know the pains or find pain is by by having the pains itself that's what i do actually so yeah, because yeah, yeah. in indonesia doctors in indonesia um uh struggling to 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 define what is entrepreneurship 
what is the entrepreneurship how to sell without uh without without against ethics right mm -hmm. no indonesian doctors allowed to promote themselves so that's why i'm entering the technology technology is my instrument yeah. to show what indonesian doctors can do mm -hmm. right so yeah. the, that's why this this and 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 by uh, talking about ecosystem for me my experience that we we build health startup also we build the ecosystems mm -hmm. right uh, we gathered along of uh, the health startup of uh, 20s we we go pitch uh, together and then we share our pains then it, it should be different different pains so by knowing uh, 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 different kind of pains, and then we we can define something there. Okay. Okay. Anira. Thank you, Mastiko. So yeah, I agree also with Mastiko. So actually, the problem is already around us. It's up to us how we dig into that problems and how we can uh, challenge our think our mind to innovate to tackle those challenges. So can we I, can have... I add one perspective, Indira? Uh, yes, Pim, but in short. A sentence please, we still have uh, me to be short <laughs> yeah <laughs> because we have other questions here to okay. answer yeah, yeah sure so but yeah. uh, so if the, pers the, spe the perspective let's say if it's from a startup this question then mm -hmm. uh, i think it's answered but if this uh, question comes from let's say an incubator accelerator or uh, a municipality that's trying to develop policies for that and I want to mention something else. Um, I'm, I'm in a program, we're helping to develop a program in Nepal about uh, making the air more clean. So we have many startups that were selected uh, recently. And uh, seven out of 10 have a problem with government regulation. So that is also something with new innovations you many times hit on government regulation or it could be also another a regulator it's not yes. necessarily directly government because that's based on let's say old market situations and this is and innovations many times come from a let's say crossing the lines between sectors and 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 technology so if this comes from that perspective, do your homework and ask many startups and innovators and universities what they see, uh, what, what they hit on in terms of regulation and then see how you can fix that. Okay. Thank you, Pim. So yeah, I, I guess I also agree with Pim here. Like we have to interfacing with all the elements uh, inside our ecosystem. Like we have to have other perspectives from outside our own perspective and also dealing with other players in the ecosystem. Yeah. So our next question here, I would like to direct it to Mas Adrian. So I guess you are the one who has the experience in funding Mas. So the second question is how to handle the lack of funding for startup early stage. In the beginning, it's very difficult to develop a startup without funding. So Mas Adrian, your thoughts, please. Mm. I, th I think my thoughts would be uh, as a startup founder, you also need to do your homework, right? I think when I talk to venture capitalists, right, it's the other way around. There is not enough good startup for me to fund. <laughs> so uh, that's that's basically something that as a startup founder, you have to understand uh, and focus what, where is your sector. Um, and what stage of a development is your company in? And then from there, you try to identify uh, what type of venture capital funding, what type of incubator, what type of accelerator is mm -hmm. focusing on that sector. Right? Yeah. Um, let's say, for example, there are uh, um, incubators that are focusing a lot on health tech, fintech. So as a startup founder, we have to identify first, it's part of your overall business plan. When you develop a business, how are you going to fund this, right? 
uh, it can also be that you know in the earth in the first stage you do a bootstrapping whereby yeah, from, your you own pocket. Go from your own pocket no. up to a product validation stage then you have a more clarity on what you are doing then you present to the venture capital i think from my own personal experience as uh, angel or basically advising or mentoring startups mm -hmm. sometimes um, once they have an idea they already want to go to the venture capitalist or want to fundraise it doesn't work like that right <laughs> because venture capitals are also responsible in managing funds from other investors so again i think this is part of the overall homework that uh, mm -hmm. as a startup founder you need to do um and and really be sure how you're going to uh, capital or where do you find capital to grow your business as part of your overall business plan but uh, i believe there is enough access to uh, funding in the market uh, in indonesia there are also now corporate venture capitals you know yeah. most of the big corporates are now setting up their own venture fund uh, sure. like astra and the others right so telecom so i think you know we we need to really uh, understand the market the situation before you grow your startup yeah thank you mas adrian so yeah what i can say here like it's really important for founders like when they are getting to start their startups like you have to at least use your own money first and then leverage the network that you have already in your circle and then after you're having the trust from your network then you can gain trust from the other investors like the angel investors and the feces and the cvc yeah. corporate venture capitals yeah okay, and so understanding the landscape understanding the yeah. investment landscape is also a homework that you need to do true that's true mas. thank you mas adrian yeah so last questions uh it's for all of the speakers here but i would like to invite mbak mia first to answer so it's from dharma uh dharma asks how do you see the future collaboration between startup in Indonesia and the Netherlands. So Mamia, can you please first answer to these questions? There are various uh, way in which uh, the collaboration can take place. Uh, first, it, it could be that uh, um, the, the startup in Netherlands can expand their operation to Indonesia. Uh, or otherwise, uh, we can also give incentive for Netherlands startup to partner with Indonesian startup and start their business uh, from the beginning in Indonesia. Uh, uh, there are also uh, we can also uh, assist in the ecosystem uh, the how the incubator accelerator and venture builders to meet. Uh, startup, particularly those uh, that focus on achievement of SDGs. So uh, that kind of startup, of course, uh, are more on the social issues. Um, um, and also, uh, we can also give uh, opportunity for startup founders to get exposure and interest yeah. in Netherlands and uh, of course it can it can be also a, an exchange program where uh, a startup in both countries can learn from each other okay thank you mamia so i highlighted two points here is about having exposures from both startups in the netherlands and in indonesia and how they can exchange knowledge and then learn from each other and they have a platform to share the ideas like this kind of seminar, I guess, is also a good platform for us to learn from each other. So I guess that's the end of our discussions and Q&A sessions. It's really great to have uh, all of you here. Thank you to all the panelists today for bringing your experience and expertise around the discussion and engaging in such fruitful and open exchanges throughout our sessions this afternoon. Now we will move forward to closing remarks by Sander Halsema, the chairman of Dutch Business Network Indonesia. Welcome, Sander. Thank you. Hello. And thank you for the speakers for the, for the very interesting session uh, this afternoon. I'm in Indonesia, so it's this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, <it's> Indonesia. <laughs> so 
let me just uh, maybe first introduce myself uh, shortly. I'm the I'm the chairman uh, currently of the Dutch Business Network here in Indonesia, uh, which is basically you could compare it to uh, the American Chamber of Commerce, for example. Uh, that's a that's a volunteer job. So everyone who's in the is in the board of of the Dutch Business Network has has a uh, professional career as well. Uh, I have to be a, a little bit uh, uh, humble, I guess, in that respect. Uh, because I do not have my own company and I also I'm not working for a startup. I'm working for a large corporate real estate firm that has offices all around the globe. So I'm, 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 I'm the one uh, who's, who is um, uh, working for, uh, for, uh, for large corporates and hence, you know, that big container ship that uh, where change is very difficult to make. And I think it's very, very interesting to see here in Indonesia, especially, you know, the amb ambition from the young Indonesians, the many uh, small and companies you see coming up and startups that are being invented. And um, so for me, I've been here for seven years. It's been it's been really nice um, to see all that happening. Um, but me, myself, I work for, for a large corporate. Uh, my wife, however, she, she does work for different startups. She was one of the founders of Belimo Bilguay and is currently working at Trefo, you, you might know that. So I, I, you know, on the sideline, I, I hear a lot of information on, on what's happening in that world. So ju just a little bit short on DBN, I don't know how much time I have, but, uh, you know, our main purpose of the Dutch business uh, network is to connect and bring together uh, professionals with a link to the Netherlands. So this, this can be Dutch people working in Indonesia, uh, Indonesians working for a Dutch firm, um, or Indonesians that have studied or worked in the Netherlands. So we try to connect these people and, and bring them together. And, and I think uh, I want to elaborate a little bit about, about um, you know, the potential cooperation between startups uh, uh, from the different co two countries, the Netherlands and Indonesia. In general, I think as, as DBN, we see that it's quite difficult for small uh, medium enterprises and startups from overseas to establish a company here in Indonesia because of the uh, rules and regulations in place, uh, right? So unless they're backed up by, by companies like Rocket Internet or venture capital firms, uh, it's, it's relatively hard, I would say, to establish a company here in Indonesia. Uh, but regardless, um, we also think that, you know, Indonesia as a country offers massive opportunities simply because of the large population you have here, the growing middle, middle class, the huge amount of, of internet users. I think it's over 200 million in the country and, and 170 million social media u, uh, users. So I think Indonesia for Dutch startups offers massive opportunities. And also Europe, I think for Indonesian startups uh, uh, offers, uh, uh, of course, uh, opportunities because the market is a bit more mature. And if we look at the Netherlands, that could really serve, the country could really serve as a gateway to the rest of the continent. So what we see happening generally, if we look at Dutch startups, um, is that most of them, whenever they're successful, they expand relatively fast after their establishment to countries like uh, the UK, Germany, France, or the US, you know, countries that have a, a larger market than, than uh, the Netherlands. Um, Indonesia um, is not often considered, I would say, as a market to, uh, to expand to. Because I think it's not very well known among many Dutch people. It's far, far away. It's 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 in Asia, um, and there's large cultural differences. I would say compared to other Western countries that Dutch startups could um, uh, expand to. So I think you know for Indonesians that have studied or worked in the Netherlands, here lies a little bit of a responsibility, um, you know, to to bridge that gap and seek opportunities of of cooperation. I would say. You know, if you if you have st uh, studied in the Netherlands um, as an Indonesian, you know the Dutch culture. You know how direct we can be sometimes, um, and I think uh, knowing that really helps. And of course, you also know the local market here in Indonesia. You know your way around, which can really help. Uh, you know, start up from overseas to 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 come here and find a way around. So SDBN. Um, we're also quite keen to play a role here uh, uh, by helping Dutch entrepreneurs looking at Indonesia. We're already doing that. Uh, we, we connect them to the right professional service providers. We help them with the initial market uh, research and exploration of the Indonesian market. 
and you know um, by connecting them we hope that process goes as smooth as possible um, looking at our indonesian member base it's also growing by the year and we really hope that they will grow going forward and so this is uh, uh let's say older indonesian professionals but also younger people that have come come from the netherlands have studied there uh, um, and, and we hope that they become a, a member of dbn um, so that we can also help as dbn to connect you to the right touch professionals i would say here in indonesia maybe they're already active or to to the the, the network we have in the need in in the netherlands with other organizations that can help uh, young Indonesian professionals to find their way and connect with the right people in the, in the Netherlands. So, you know, as a closing remark, I would like to invite all the people that have interest to become a member of the Dutch Business Network uh, that I think uh, you should definitely do so um, because um, um, I think there's, there's a great possibilities for us to connect you with the right people to go to the Netherlands or for Dutch people in the Netherlands active looking at Indonesia to expand to this beautiful country. So those yeah. are my uh, closing remarks. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Sander, for your closing remarks. And uh, I guess we're already in our end of the program for today's session. Uh, as a key takeaway, I would like to say here, SDGs are our global agendas. And as mentioned by all the speakers today, by collaboration and connecting with the right players in the ecosystem, we can achieve things together that we could never achieve alone. Once again, thank you to all the panelists today and also Sander from Dutch Business Network Indonesia. And special thanks again to Netherlands Alumni Indonesia together with Halo.id and Rotasi Institute who initiated the session. Last but not least, special thanks to all of you, our spectacular audience for your participation and engagement uh, during the session. Thank you and see you again in our events. Stay healthy and safe, everyone. Goodbye.